Hoover Tower is Stanford's tallest building. For two years, I've seen it towering above campus and couldn't help but think, could it fly like a rocket? The rocket was entirely 3D printed on an FDM 3D printer. There's no models of Hoover Tower online, so I had to build it from scratch. Luckily, there's a lot of photos, and I've seen it enough times that after a few hours, I had a pretty compelling model. The printer has been broken for over two years, so it took a lot of prints before I finally got it to work. Each section takes about 30 hours to print, but after a few weeks of tuning, I got all the parts made. The greatest challenge with making Hoover Tower fly is ensuring that it's stable. And for this, there's two things to understand. The first is the center of gravity. As something flies through the air, it rotates about the center of gravity, which is the point where there's equal weight distributed on both sides. And second is the center of pressure. This is the average location which the aerodynamic forces are applied to the rocket. As the rocket rotates, you want the center of pressure to be below the center of gravity so that it rotates in the opposite direction to always stay aligned with the airflow. Hoover Tower on its own doesn't have this, meaning that the rocket would flip out of control. However, by adding fins, you can lower the center of pressure and make it more stable. For the fins, I decided to make them of polycarbonate. This is a very impact resistant material plus it's clear to preserve the Hoover Tower aesthetic. What I didn't anticipate was how flexible it is. To fix this, I got some metal wire and tensioned it around the fins. It adds a bit of drag, but makes them much more rigid. Because 3D printed PLA isn't super strong, I added some reinforcements to the rocket. From my sims, it suggests it should pull about 5 Gs, which means that if it's a 15 pound rocket, it should be able to hold over 75 pounds. Intuitively, that felt like it was pushing it, so I added these aluminum threaded rods, which would go along the length of the rocket and attach to the motor at the bottom. The idea is as the motor introduces force up to the rocket, instead of it being pushed straight through the plastic, it instead goes into these metal rods, which then distribute the force to ensure that none of the plastic snaps. And now comes recovery because what goes up must come down, and I didn't want another lawn dart like my last rocket. <laughs> because the rocket isn't going very high, I don't need to worry about it coming down slowly, which means I can put a massive chute. I chose a 12 foot troidal chute, which the sim suggests should come down at about 12 feet a second. I decided to make the top of Hoover Tower detach and the parachute to come out of that top section. I did my first practice integration and then tried deployment. Ooh, okay. that was a forest. Shout out to Matthew for making me these deployment charges. For avionics, I used an off the shelf rocket flight computer. I decided to make the arming fancy and put two removable for flight tags that would arm when they were removed. If vibrations or debris caused one of the switches to trip, the second one would keep it armed and ensure that the battery wouldn't cut out. And finally, I added some finishing touches. I used a lathe with a radius cutter to make a polished aluminum top, which would act to hold the nose cone together. I also added about three pounds of steel to the top to move the center of gravity up, further improving the stability. And with that, the rocket was ready to fly. I packed up and drove seven hours to the launch site in the Mojave Desert.
Yo! It definitely. We got some differing. Uh, 14 pounds. All 3D printed? Yes. Oh! 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 Oh!